Okay, so it's uh, two minutes past, so maybe we get going. So welcome everybody. So I see that we have uh, many more online that are actually physically present here today, but, but uh, that's probably a, a good way to handle this also for the community. So this is the community update, which follows uh, the, the uh, uh, board meeting that we have every uh, four, uh, four times a year. Uh, this is the agenda for the for the board meeting. I'm not going to go through it all because there's uh, too many agenda items. But I'm picking up a few few elements for for discussion. But maybe before that, just to sort of a, a recap these these things that what we are discussing at these meetings are the things that happen at the national board. Uh, and, and this is by no means the only decision-making body at uh, SciLife Lab, but this is the one that particularly deals with uh, infrastructure issues and the overview of everything. But then we have SciLife Lab committees at each of the four host universities, and they decide on the SFO funding that uh, all the four uh, host universities get for their involvement at SciLife Lab. And then the important uh, point that we should maybe connect with these meetings is that we have a separate Campus Solna committee that deals with the issues in this house, the practical issues for space localization and people moving in and out. And, and uh, we were just chatting with Frederick that maybe we should have a meeting when an update of all of these things happens at the same time in the future. So we will be uh, discussing that. But today it's a it's an update on the national board and I'll go through some agenda items. First, I'll just show some of the slides that I showed for the board also when uh, just giving an update on what's happened at SciLife Lab uh, in the past uh, quarter. Uh, the, the important uh, community update from the, from the angle of the community update is really the research community program that was uh, sort of a launched as a call which ended in February and we actually received 32 applications which is really really positive so there was a lot of activity in that uh, uh, call uh, and, and uh, many infrastructures, many scientists were participating in it and the idea of this one is to make uh, a sort of a communities, research communities out of SciLife Lab that will be internationally competitive and collaborative across Sweden and build upon the infrastructures that we have set up to serve scientists here. And in the, in the future, and, and not through this call yet, but into the future, we think that this is a way to define the core research areas where SciLife Lab is active. Obviously, we will still continue to serve anybody who is qualified to, to be a user for SciLife Lab platforms, but, but maybe some areas are things where we should really build uh, strength. So MG, SciLife Lab committees, IAB will evaluate them and eventually board will decide on this. We don't have an exact number in mind as to how many of these things we will uh, uh, fund uh, and we also hope that the host universities will fund some of them so that will take some time to settle but, but really good activity here so it shows that this is an important uh, activity and an important program. So uh, some aspects on the on the uh, seminar. So uh, uh, in, in Uppsala, there's been a Swedberry seminar series that has been running since the 70s. That was linked to SciLife Lab when SciLife Lab started at Uppsala. And now what ha was happening now is there's a joint uh, seminar committee with the plan that in the fall this uh, Svetbar seminar series lectures will also happen in Stockholm. So this will also unite the, the uh, Uppsala and Stockholm components of SciLife Lab. Some updates on the fellows. So we have two new fellows, Erika uh, Komasko at uh, uh, Uppsala and then Oscar Carlson starting in the spring at Stockholm University. And uh, there are also uh, ongoing advertisement, joint advertisement between KI and Uppsala for new fellows. And soon another round of advertisement from KTH and SU for new fellows. So this will uh, sort of a have a major impact again on, on, on uh, SciLife Lab future. And obviously some of our existing fellows are approaching the, the end of their four year periods as well. And, and this is sort of a part of the whole idea that the fellows come and, and, and they are 
part of the SciLife lab for a while and then they return to their host university, hopefully retaining some activities and links to SciLife lab in the future as well. So uh, some uh, preliminary analysis of publications uh, over the past uh, uh, years. Uh, so now we have a little challenge here that when this is happening, for the board meeting and for our annual report, the web of science lags behind and the 2017 data are un incomplete. So, so uh, we are not likely to have a decrease of publication, it's just that the six 2017 papers are uh, not yet fully, fully registered in, the, in, in, in there. Uh, but, but there's clearly an, an, an upward trend both in terms of publications where researchers have used the SciLife Lab infrastructures and then uh, uh, those papers that come directly from SciLife Lab associated scientists. And I made just my own uh, unofficial look at PubMed, which is real time, which is not lacking behind, like Web of Science. And you clearly see that 2017 was an upward uh, trend uh, in the community. Uh, SciLife Lab uh, publications, we were also looking at their citation impact and, and both those that uh, come from, from the research infrastructure users, they have a higher uh, impact factor than on average in their fields and, and particularly that is the case for papers that arise from SciLife Lab uh, scientists. Uh, some uh, uh, seminar series have been arranged in the in the past uh, quarter uh, from the, the from the facilities, and some other uh, infrastructure related uh, activities. The the plasma profiling uh, uh, facility will offer the O-link assays that were taken uh, down from the from the clinical biomarkers facility. There is an update on the compute facilities at, at the uh, uh, SciLife lab, increasing uh, storage capacity and, and processing nodes. Uh, and uh, there's also uh, new equipment being bought, uh, for instance, in the cell profiling activity to allow multiplexed antibody stains to happen on, on uh, human cells. Uh, one major upgrade that is being planned but is not yet fully uh, uh, sort of a uh, official is that there would be an upgrade on the cryo EM capabilities in Stockholm. So this is obviously a major uh, thing. A, a, a new uh, Titan Cryos is being uh, considered for purchase with a new camera. So together with the fact that Umeo will be now online, there will be four to five fold higher cryo EM capacity coming up uh, next year or in whenever it uh, uh, happens that this will be fully online. So major development uh, here. This is actually uh, linked to the uh, uh, Knut and Alice Wallenberg Foundation and their SAP visit to SciLife Lab. So this group of, of Nobel Prize winners was here to review the investments of the CoAV to SciLife Lab. So they looked at genomics, they looked at single cells, WABI and the cryo-EM and, and uh, we don't have any official feedback from them but an unofficial comment was that they really uh, liked SciLife Lab and felt that this is a, a world class, uh, uh, that SciLife Lab is absolutely world class. Um, we will have in the next board meeting a, a particularly different focus than, than in the past. So, so in the next board meeting we will not just go through decisions that require immediate action, uh, but consider long-term strategies. Uh, and, and, and there are sort of a many issues that we could consider. One is clearly the future national infrastructure role for SciLife Lab, the role of the board, uh, consortium agreement, we will see an, a reduced impact of CoAve and VR funding in the future. Uh, also commercial service providers, particularly in genomics, are coming to this space and, and we need to consider strategically as to what's the long-term impact of this for SciLife, particularly for preparing for the next budget cycle of, of uh, SciLife Lab. Uh, also this uh, RCP call and other things, I mean, how can we really have an impact on the national uh, research aspects? But overall, for the May meeting, I mean, please come up with suggestions for strategies that, that we should uh, consider with SciLife Lab, because this is a, uh, with the board, because this is really an important occasion to, to uh, make them aware of the issues that, that, that we should be uh, uh, doing here. 
So, so one uh, final uh, slide on the update. So as, as we have uh, said that our, our uh, aim is to be a national hub for molecular life science research. So what does that hub uh, really mean? It means that we should have links to the community at large. And this is a slide that Lars uh, Hammarström has been working on, which indicates both the university links, indicates academic international links, indicates links to funding agencies, indicates links to companies, hospitals, biobanks and so forth. So this is a work in progress. So don't take it like this is our network, but just to illustrate the complexity of the environment where we are working at and how we would like to link all of these various capabilities together as, as part of the SciLife Lab activities. So uh, some statistics now. So the annual report was uh, uh, published or, or was prepared for the board and, and was approved by the board and then was sent to KTH and the government to be to be uh, sort of a an annual report from from the SciLife Lab uh, uh, sort of a community. Uh, this is now only in Swedish because it went to the to the government, but it will be components of these uh, statistics will be released also also obviously in English. So an update on last year's uh, uh, infrastructure users. So so now a little bit differently calculated than be before that there were 1500 unique uh, users of SciLife Lab infrastructure. About 40% of the academic users are from the uh, universities outside of Stockholm and, and, and Uppsala. Uh, there are some sort of a uh, similarities to, to previous years in terms of how, how this looks like. There's also interestingly a 4% uh, user base of international universities, so clearly more international involvement of, of uh, SciLife Lab in, 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 in that sense. And this is according to the wishes of the, of the government as well, so this is well done. The other thing that is really remarkable is that, that if you count together healthcare, industry and, and other government uh, uh, officials, uh, this is 17% um, uh, of the users. So this is also a significant increase of SciLife like capacity goes to, to these uh, entities. And, and, and again, particularly in terms of the industry, this is again something that the government has wished would uh, happen in the in the future as well. Um, nothing that I really need to go through in terms of the specifics of the report. This was like a, a report of the DDD and also a report of the uh, external uh, funding uh, for uh, SciLife Lab, but, but uh, I'll sort of uh, skip that now. Uh, some uh, nominations that, that we wanted to uh, uh, bring up. So one is the, the uh, scientific directors for the host universities. We have had interim nominations one after the other. And now hopefully this will be a long-term nomination of the scientific directors. They were each nominated by the four host universities. So we only got male nominations. So this is not something that we could do anything at the board level anymore when host universities uh, nominated males here. But we have Peter uh, Mats and, and Ulf who had previously served as scientific directors and now Janne Lehtiö will be the scientific director for uh, KI. So these people are your links to the host universities, your links to SFO uh, links and the, and the, and the um, involvement of each university in SciLife Lab activities. We also have several new facility directors, many new heads of facilities. I'm not going to go through the names here but important that, that we get sort of a, a new people to replace uh, those who have, uh, have uh, departed or left for other, other engagements. Uh, one additional nomination to mention is this National uh, SciLife Lab Committee. And, and what this is that, as you know, each host university has their own SciLife Lab committees that define on uh, on the on on or link through the SDs and IDs on what what happens at the at the national side. Uh, this is the committee for the non-host uh, universities, and this is meant to be the voice 
of the non-host universities on SciLife lab activities. So they advise us as a, as, as a management group and we also inform them about the activities that go on at SciLife lab. And we hold this hope that this group will also act like uh, ambassadors of SciLife lab in their host universities. So official links to SciLife lab to to these other universities which you see here. Gunilla, who is on our board, is, is a, a chairperson of this group, but then we have Chalmers uh, Agricultural uh, University, Gothenburg, Linköping, Lund and Umeå, and then the uh, uh, Wallenberg Centers for Molecular Medicine represented in this uh, group. So we really hope, uh, look forward to interacting with them in terms of planning the national involvement of, of SciLife Lab. Frederick could say a, a bit more on the legal aspects of user fees. So this has been an issue for a long time that there's been a little bit of an unclear legal basis for the application of user fees in academia when universities charge each others. And, and we hope that SciLife Lab will be able to now uh, prepare a letter to the Ministry of Education from KTH on behalf of SciLife Lab and the host university. And this will be based on a PM that was already prepared for University Uppsala on this issue. And that was sent to the, to the ministry and their suggestion is that the regulating spread to the u host universities, the, the, the order of the, from the government to the host universities will be a way to dictate how, how uh, use of this could officially and legally be managed in, in, in SciLife Lab. So if this hap happens, that would certainly be a, a positive, positive development. So then an, an important thing that is active this spring uh, really is, is all the, all the uh, issues linked to midterm checkup and all the ex issues linked to ongoing uh, calls for infrastructures. And since these were just very recently uh, released and, and uh, Lars has sent out detailed information on them, I'm only putting them up here as, as uh, a, a quick summary. So first of all, all the facilities undergo a midterm checkup. It doesn't mean an official evaluation by any external uh, bodies, but, but we will uh, uh, go through a, a, a sort of a review on how all of these facilities have, have uh, performed and how they have acted upon our suggestions. Uh, and, and then this will be forming a basis for the next two years of budgets for the facilities. As part of this midterm checkup, there we also uh, go through these various calls that are uh, open and, and, and sort of they discuss them. So one is the call to incorporate the previously launched, previously funded, SFO funded pilot project or pilot facility projects at SciLife Lab. And the idea is to uh, enable uh, through external funding for these facilities to be incorporated as part of existing platforms and, and facilities. So in, in, uh, we, we don't expect these, them to, to, to give rise to new uh, official national facilities, but, but they, could, they could be incorporated into the existing ones. Then another uh, important call is the call for technology development projects. So, so this is similar to, this, uh, the, to, to the old uh, SFO funded pilot project facility, but we now call it technology development because the impact or the, the idea of this one is to really help all our existing national facilities to keep their technology up to speed. So therefore this allows uh, people from inside the facilities, but also anybody from the academic user community to suggest new technologies that could then be uh, in, in a few years made available as part of the SciLife Lab infrastructure for, from 2021 20, uh, uh, onward. So, so, so this is an R&D effort for our national uh, facilities and we'll sort of a have a call uh, for this one as well. And then the final call, which is uh, up and uh, running uh, now, is an application for expensive instruments. So all our facilities need to upgrade uh, and, and replace and extend their equipment base. And, and this is a, a, a response to the wish from the community that let's, let's sort of a try to help that uh, from SciLife Lab. So this is particularly for larger uh, equipment. Uh, and it's really 
geared towards the national infrastructure uh, uh, facilities. And, and linked to this one, and this is an important, totally from the outside, that right now there is a, a call open at SSF which uh, concerns uh, proposals for instruments, technologies and methods development. And this is deadlined in two weeks. And the interesting thing is that SSF plans to support about 40 such projects. Obviously, this is across all fields of science. This is across all universities. But this will be funded about uh, 8 million for, for uh, three years. And, and therefore, for all of our international facilities and anybody at SciLife Lab should be aiming at sort of a looking at this call because it's a, a great funding opportunity uh, that is happening at the same time as, as we are running our, our uh, call. So uh, to kind of uh, put these calls into perspective, so, so this is also uh, something that we have been uh, discussing with the, with the infrastructure facilities. So on an annual basis, we fund about 200 million for SciLife Lab uh, infrastructure funding. This is the basic funding that we give to the national facilities. Uh, we give it for two years and then uh, after this midterm checkup expect that to be continued for another two years. So over a four year period this is uh, already almost a billion uh, crowns. So it is a significant funding considered in that sense. And, and this is how we expect that this base funding will, will continue. But what this uh, uh, sort of a uh, what are the other things that relate to this? It's obviously that infrastructures are applying for funding from other sources. VR in particular, Coave and obviously the host universities are supporting. So this is a, a, an add-on to the uh, funding base. Uh, and, and then what these calls that we are now running is that we put about 10 million a year, uh, 40 million over four, uh, uh, four years into these uh, uh, equipment calls. And particularly now we may have some uh, surplus funding that we can use on top of this one. So this, this funding may be larger uh, this year, but in the future th this is meant to be at least 10 million depreciation per year. And, and then uh, we'll have uh, a, a funding, uh, tech development funding, round one and round two. Uh, and, and, and this will be the R&D uh, support that we give to the facilities. And then uh, the third one, sorry that this doesn't show up too well on the, on the screen, is that we also consider it important that we support the staff and, and the careers of the people inside the SciLife Lab uh, facilities. And finally, on, on, on the kind of a, uh, uh, as a base for all of this, is the research community funding. So, so previously we were only like considering this national infrastructure funding giving support to individual platforms, but, but it's important that we support the equipment, R&D, staff, scientists and, and also the research communities around this. So this is kind of a meant to provide an overview of the various activities. And I should also point out that this is the funding for the national part. So for many of these calls, we hope that the SFO funding will be sort of a also provided to these proposals. Obviously, we cannot dictate that this is up to the host universities to make their priorities and make their funding decisions. But we hope that this will be a much bigger uh, uh, funding source for these calls in the, in the future if the, if the host universities are interested in kind of docking into this uh, funding scheme that we run on the national side. This last point was uh, really about the, the uh, staff thing. So what we need is unique equipment. We need uh, the expertise of the staff and this together promotes the SciLife Lab services. And I may have said this before to some of you, but, but we really want to also put an emphasis on the, on the people and the people's careers at SciLife Lab. So we have in the SciLife Lab infrastructures probably about 300 uh, specialists who are fundamentally important to, to, to running the services. And often these technology experts have fallen off of the uh, traditional academic uh, track at universities. So the question is how could we help the career development of infrastructure people at SciLife Lab? And, and uh, could we uh, fund some, some career development activities 
uh, such as lab visits, research and technology development projects, mini sabbaticals and so forth for this community of, of people. So, so this is being planned and if you are interested in participating, so, so uh, send email to Lars uh, Johansson so, so uh, he can sort of a link you up with the group. So we want you to plan how we should run this. How should we uh, sort of a help the staff uh, in an optimal way here and, and, and uh, be active and, and I think this is sort of a of interest to, to quite a few people in the, in the community. So well, uh, I think this is more or less the last point that I uh, had here, that the point uh, uh, 12 on the agenda that Annika was was uh, uh, introducing and Annika is not here today to, 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 to do this, so I'll do it. Uh, on behalf of her, so, so there's been a uh, discussion now on how SciLife Lab steering groups, or sometimes also we have called them platform advisory groups, how should they function? And as you know, this is a, a fairly complicated thing because the platforms are composed of uh, uh, or, or have uh, three to ten facilities that, that, that form the platform. Some of these platforms are either completely overlapping with VR-funded platforms or partially overlapping with VR-funded or COAVE-funded platforms. And obviously VR and COAVE, they all have different models on how, how uh, platforms should be steered. And, and we should set up a system where we clearly, clearly sort of a, uh, ensure that SciLife Lab is strategically uh, maintaining a role here, but, but we don't in practice make things too complicated. So for instance, if we consider some of these uh, platforms, so for instance, Proteomics has a national platform, only two of these facilities belong to our Proteomics uh, platform. Metabolomics has a lot of activities outside our uh, current facilities. There's the NMI, National uh, Molecular Imaging, uh, platform, which is a VR-funded platform, and only part of that is is uh, composed of the SciLife Lab facilities, and and so forth. So, so uh, in in that sense, um, this is a, a, a complicated issue, and the, and and what we are planning now that we would use lots of the same steering group as the VR uh, dictates to be to be launched uh, for these platforms but make sure that the mandate for the, for the steering group is such that uh, the SciLife Lab strategic funding to the platforms is still managed by SciLife Lab and not, not by the uh, external steering group entirely. And we will sort of, after some discussion in the board meeting, the next board meeting will hopefully make some decisions on this where we try to make the distinction between steering groups that run platforms, help to prioritize projects and so forth, and then the strategic decisions on how funding is being applied and, and how future decisions are, are being made. So, so uh, this will be then a topic for the next uh, meeting. Then uh, uh, Mats described principles for the use of the space, uh, uh, research space in Solna. And this is an example of the types of things that belong to the Campus Solna Committee that are very important and active to the people in this community. And these are not really sort of a issues that the National Board dictates in detail, but the National Board uh, only discussed the principles of space allocation. So, Mats will uh, describe this in more details and this is just I'm mentioning it so that you are aware of the fact that these discussions are underway and this is uh, the Campus Solna that will define these, these principles for, for space utilization and, and talk to Mats and the other Campus Solna representatives if you are interested in this one. So with that I've, I've sort of a spent about half an hour to quickly rush through some of the topics for the for the board meeting and and uh, for the if there are questions now either from you here or from the people who are online uh, can david you take any questions online no you can't take any questions online okay so there are there are, uh, but if you have any questions so please please send them to uh, uh, david and anybody any any quick things to discuss today. Doesn't look like that. 
David, still nothing on the online either. So with that, I think we close this officially now and, and thank you all for, for uh, being part of it and, and sort of I see you again in a few months. Thanks.